Hello and welcome to another edition of The Movie Garage. We are on episode 34 right now. Uh, I'm Jay. Um, I'm here on my own again. Uh, good news, bad news, uh, we shall see. Gary's very busy at the minute, so we're just getting out things as and when we can. Um, he will hopefully be jumping on to do a review for us about of something this weekend and we can get some stuff out. Hopefully he'll be back with us for a uh, proper show next Tuesday. Well, we're still hoping to get this um, Snyder Cut special out where we're just going to bitch about that purely for an hour or so um yeah uh, you might have noticed the surroundings have changed only a little bit we're in the mid middle of a big uh garage refit that's only if you're watching the video obviously if you're listening to the podcast and just blank off for a second um so you just have to excuse the mess but you know we'll plow through um quite a bit of stuff changed coming up this week which is quite nice it's quite a lot of news uh, as i was mentioning last week Things seem to be starting to get moving again, which is good news. Everybody's going back into production. Cinemas are starting to open up as more people get vaccinated. Be interested to see what the cinemas do. Still haven't really, really seen uh, a plan for getting people back in movie theatres and that kind of thing. But, you know, we will see in the next month. Everything still seems to be going well, so fingers crossed. Um, beer gardens look like they're opening up. I think it's next week that beer gardens open up in the UK. Um, the weather obviously has started doing all kinds of crazy shit over the past week we've had like blizzards and um, it's blowing a friggin gale outside right now it has been wherever i've been working as well um so yeah we're all going to be sat outside shivering our balls off having a pint with people that we haven't seen for like a year or so which is going to be quite nice still just nice to make an effort in it be good to get back to at least a little bit of normality getting drunk outside rather than being sat on my sofa drunk alone um, yeah, so anyway, like I said, let's crack on. There's plenty of movie stuff coming out now, some quite exciting stuff as well. Uh, first up, at Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, for There's been an advert out for this movie for quite a while now, and this is an actual sequel to the first two Ghostbusters movies, um, rather than the, the um, Lady reboot that they did. Lady reboot? That doesn't sound right, does it? Uh, yeah, rather than the all-female reboot that they did not so long ago, which... Um, was terrible not gonna lie I uh, hated every single second of it it went so far past like woman empowerment and into just straight up hating men that it just really really degraded the film and really shit all over the originals as well which was quite upsetting um, this one like I say is a direct sequel it's basically Ghostbusters 3 that we're getting and um, it's starring Paul Rudd and Finn Wolfhard who is one of the lads out of Stranger Things and um, I think after Millie Bobby Brown, he's probably going to be the most famous. Uh, he was in It. I think he played Richie. Uh, in It, the young version of Richie in the It remake that's just been out. Um, he's a quality actor. He's going to be absolutely huge. Um, he plays the grandson, and he has a younger sister, um, and they both play the grandchildren of Egon Spengler from the original Ghostbusters lineup. Um, it looks like they move out to an old farm that Egon used to use, and they discover all of his um, all of his equipment. Um, if you've seen the advert, this is all in the advert. No spoilers or anything like that yet. Film's not out for a while. It's um, they find Ecto One and uh, a bunch of proton packs and all the, all that kind of stuff. Paul Rudd plays their teacher. It looks like who is a bit of a Ghostbusters geek and knows all the history around it. Um, there was a clip dropped of it this week which was absolutely hilarious. It features Paul Rudd wandering around a supermarket and then basically getting attacked by a load of miniature Stay Puffed Marshmallow Men, which was quite nice, quite a nice callback. Um, if you watch the advert as well, there's a bit in the advert where Paul Rudd is in a car and a big uh, hairless dog paw lands on the bonnet. So with that and Stay Puffed being in it, are we getting back to a bit Zooly from the first Ghostbusters movie, maybe? Um, it'll be interesting to see. Don't really know that much about it. I know the original cast coming back, obviously, the ones that are still surviving. Um, yeah, um, Bill Murray, I think, Bill Murray or Dan Aykroyd, one of the two, is quoted as saying it's very much got a feel of the original two films. Very much excited for this movie to come out. Can't wait to see it. Love Paul Rudd, like I said, Finn Wolfhard and uh, the other kids in there. And shock horror, turns out that boys and girls can both both ghost bust at exactly the same time. I know it's, uh, it's enough to make some of you faint, but yeah. Turns out that there's like a mixed sexed sex group of Ghostbusters this time. 
um, rather than proving a point. Uh, but yeah, uh, very excited to see this film. We'll see when that comes out uh, a bit later on. I think it's later on this year, but I'm not sure on the plans because obviously they keep knocking things back and rolling it over at the minute. I think it was supposed to come out summer last year, perhaps, and now it's coming out summer this year, maybe. Uh, yeah, anyway, more on that when we uh, when we get some more news. Um, speaking of like releases and when things coming out and stuff getting knocked back, I spoke last week a little bit about HBO Max's plan to um, release all of their, um, well, not HBO Max's, uh, Warner Brothers, who are with HBO Max, their plan to release all of their big summer blockbusters and pretty much their entire movie lineup this year on HBO Max so you can stream it from home at the same time that they're releasing it at the pictures, those cinemas that are open worldwide. Um, I thought I'd have a look at a bit of a list of some of those movies that are coming out soon enough. Um, I've been banging on like mad about Mortal Kombat. That's coming out next. Obviously, the first one that we had last week was Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, that's come out on HBO Max in America. Um, it came out on Sky over here. Uh, 15 it was to rent for a little while. I uh, did that this weekend, had a watch of it. I think I'm probably going to do a review of it in like the next video. Because, uh, yeah, so I'll speak about it a bit more there. I'm assuming that all of these other big movies, these big titles, are going to come out in exactly the same way. They're um, they're going to be released for a fee of about fifteen ninety nine. Fifteen ninety nine in the UK is probably the equivalent of two standard cinema tickets. So if you just go like two D and don't go for obviously three D, don't go for three D or IMAX or any of the other special stuff that you can, um, is probably the same price as two cinema tickets quite steep but I mean not too bad obviously they've got to make the, as much money as they can out of this because budgets for these films are insane the amount of graphics that goes into like Godzilla vs Kong is that, I don't know what the budget was for the film but they're going to be clawing that back for a long ass time um, but yeah like I say more on Godzilla vs Kong later on so the next one that's coming out uh, is going to be Mortal Kombat which is at the end of this month which I'm well excited about and I'm definitely going to be uh, getting a piece of that uh, I'd like to go and see it at the movie. I was talking to Gary about us maybe doing an outing, doing the first like movie garage cinema trip together, but it all depends on stuff coming together when things are opening and all that kind of thing. I don't think I'm going to be able to wait to see this film. So if it's a couple of weeks before cinemas open, then probably just going to watch it at home. And then we'll go from there. Um, so this isn't like the entire list that I'm going to go through. These are just some of like the major ones that, that I'm quite looking forward to and uh, the, the bigger, biggest names. Um, Space Jam A New Legacy is also going to be released this, this same way. That's coming out a bit later on in the year. Um, there's an advert out for that now as well. You may have noticed people going mental online because they changed... Oh God, what's the name of the bunny? Is it Lola? Lola Bunny? Do you know the, the, the sexy cartoon rabbit? that uh, was in the first Space Jam movie. They've changed her up and kind of modernised her a little bit and put her in an actual, more of a respectable outfit. And people have gone insane about it. Why? 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 Why do you need to get off on a cartoon bunny so much? There's literally like free porn all over the internet. You know, just Google actual real women. Why are you so bothered about a bunny being sexy or not? It, it's, people terrify me. People genuinely terrify the shit out of me. Next one, uh, another one that's on the list. I don't think these are in order of release. Um, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. So if you're going to do a Google, then just check. It's all on there. It's cool. Uh, Suicide Squad is another one that's going to do it. This is the James Gunn one. I spoke about this quite a bit last week because we got uh, another advert for it. This looks mega. Um, yeah, can't wait to see that one. Also begs the question, uh, obviously that's a big DC film. Uh, whether we're going to get the Batman, the Robert Pattinson Batman movie, which uh, I think is out next year. I'm not 100% sure on the release date of that, uh, but that looks great. This week, or I think it was either start of this week or late last week, it was announced that Pattinson's Batman is actually set on Earth 2, DC Earth 2, which if you know the comics at all, is part of the DC multiverse. So it's a separate Earth to where the Snyderverse is, I'm assuming that I'd make the Snyderverse Earth 1. Now, there's also rumours 
that uh, the Joker from the Joker film was also set on Earth 2. So maybe Patterson is going to meet up with that Joker. Maybe that's going to be his Joker. No one really knows yet where it's going. Hopefully The Flash will have a lot of answers and we'll, do, we'll get a, a whole bunch of crossovers going on. We'll see a, a hell of a lot of different versions of Batman and all that kind of stuff. It'd be cool to see a uh, Patterson and Ben Affleck crossover, I think. Because the Patterson Batman is apparently set two years after he started being Batman. Whereas the uh, Affleck Batman that we've seen in the Snyderverse is kind of like years and years. I think he's been doing it like 20 years and he's really old and grumpy about it. So like a, a bit of mentor menteeship going on there, maybe, when he meets like a younger version of himself who's still quite idealistic and he's got hope um, and it's not been beaten out of him well, with a crowbar by a clown. Yeah. But we shall see. It'll be interesting. Um, whether they'll release that on HBO Max or whether that'll go into cinemas obviously depends on what's going on at the time. I imagine this is just going to be the setup for the entirety of the future for HBO Max. I um, think he's going the same way as well, in it? Uh, Disney Plus, they've just announced that they're releasing Black Widow, the Black Widow movie, after that's been delayed and delayed and delayed and rolled back. They're, they've announced that they're doing that the same way as this. So it's going to be released in pictures, same time as it's streaming on Disney Plus that instead. So maybe this is what we're going to see uh, in the future now. I'm definitely still going to go to the pictures. I really, really love going to the cinema, but when you can't be asked. This is going to end up costing me a friggin' fortune, man. If they've got any sense, what they'll do is they'll, like, do a yearly pass or something like that. I mean, I'd pay, like, 60, 70 quid just to have, like, a yearly cinema pass where all the big budget movies are just open for me to watch whenever they come on Sky. Um, that'd be awesome. Do, so do that, Sky. Do that. Something that I can sign up to, just do a big one-off payment, then I get all of these big movie releases that are out of the cinema at the same time throughout the home. Because... I mean, if anybody's monitoring my Sky use, you know that I'll just sit there just watching shit all day. Literally, all I do on my weekends. It's well good, it says, apart from moving the bastard garage around. Yeah, <laughs> gross. Um, another one uh, being released is uh, Dune. So the new remake of Dune with literally everybody who's ever been in Hollywood in it. The cast of that is amazing. The ad adverts look great. Um I'd be really interested to do a comparison between the new one and the old one when that new movie comes out. I think I'll enjoy doing something like that. So, like, watch the first one, then watch the second one straight after, see how they cross over. Um, yeah, so there's a movie called Cry Macho, which I believe is Clint Eastwood. Don't really know too much about that. Uh, King Richard, another one I don't know too much about, looking at the picture. It's Will Smith, so it's not going to be a bad film, no matter what it's about. He, he literally just, like, shits money when it comes to movies. And rightly so, because he's really, really good at what he does. The biggest one, for me, I think, of that whole lineup is The Matrix 4. Um, December 22nd, I believe, The Matrix 4 is being released. And that will uh, go to streaming at the same time it's going to pictures, which I am really surprised about. I, I would have thought they might try and stagger it to make as much money as possible. But that's definitely one that you got to go see at the pictures, right? It's a... Matrix movie for God's sake! All the others have been that big. It's it's good to watch them again at home, but that's definitely one that's got to be seen on a big screen. Then again, Godzilla vs Kong was another one. I'd have loved to see that in IMAX. I bet it's crazy. If it's if it comes on once the cinemas reopen, definitely going to spend money on a ticket to go see that again. Yeah. So Matrix Four. Uh, obviously, we've got Keanu Reeves who's returning to that. Um, I think the girl who played Trinity is coming back as well, and a few of the others. How they're going to do it, I have no idea because of obviously how the third one ended, but very much looking forward to that film. I've not really seen or heard much about it yet. Hmm, interesting. But they've obviously finished production because John Wick has gone back into production. This is John Wick... Oh, shit. I believe it's number four, isn't it? John Wick 4 is currently filming at the minute. Um, Keanu's been spotted on set, so production of that's underway, which is great. Um, they're great movies, aren't they, John Wick? They're just non-thinkers. Let's just watch this guy just straight up murder a whole bunch of people. And I'm still waiting on some more news about the spin-off as well, which is about the hotel, the Continental, that he uses in that, which is, if you've not seen the film, um, John Wick's a hitman, and his character, at a couple of points throughout the movie franchise, uses this hotel, which is just amazing. So the rules are, it's like um, a safe zone, 
you're not allowed to kill anybody there or any competitors. That's the idea anyway. Obviously, if you're going to put a rule in like that in a film, then the laws of movies means that that rule has to be broken at some point. Um, so, yeah, they're making an, a spin-off about that. I think it's a Netflix series, if I'm right. We don't know whether John Wick is going to pop up in that series or whether it's going to refer to him or whether it's going to relate to the films in any other way. We just know it's set in the same universe about the same kind of hotels. So, yeah, fingers crossed about that. And fingers crossed for the next one. Don't really know much details about this uh, next film either. I'm sure it's just going to be a crazy amount of people getting splattered up the wall in a number of diff di um, different ways. Always fun. Yeah. Um, next, I wanted to talk a bit about... Uh, a movie that has had an advert released this week. I, I think, I'm not sure if it's the second advert or the first one, um, and it's Cruella. This is the movie starring Emma Stone as Cruella de Vil. This is something that Hollywood's doing quite a lot at the minute, and I don't know whether I love or hate it. I think it depends on which way to go with it. So if you're not familiar with Cruella de Vil, if you haven't left the house in like the next last... 40 years, something along those lines, whenever it came out. Cruella is the bad guy in 101 Dalmatians who wants to kidnap all, how many, 99 puppies, because these are two grown-up ones as well. She wants to kidnap all the 99 puppies, skin them alive, and make a coat out of them. So it's safe to say that she's a pretty bad dude. I hope they don't change that for this film. They've got a thing in Hollywood at the minute. All the different studios are kind of doing it as well, where they take an amazing baddie, who is just really, really bad, and explain why he's bad. They did it to Maleficent. I was like, well, yeah, Maleficent is well good. Yeah, you, you kill that sleeping bitch. Just fucking do her. That's it. That's all we need to know about Maleficent. She's bad, she's jealous, she kicks some ass. Next thing, Angelina Jolie comes along and shows that she's actually lovely, and she was just misunderstood, and she was screwed over by a bad, a bad good guy. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? She was screwed over by a bad... The guy who was supposed to be the good guy actually screwed the bad guy over, which made the bad guy the bad guy. I think that's kind of how Malefic Maleficent goes. So she she just stayed in the woods and got better, but it actually turns out she's a good guy. Like, no, don't want that. Just be a dead good bad guy. Joker. That horrible Joker movie did exactly the same thing as well. Look, here's the Joker. He's like the worst of the worst. But this is why we should really feel sorry for him and we should really th see things from his point of view. No, I don't want that. I want the Joker to show up out of nowhere like he does in uh, Dark Knight. Just kill a lot of people and do a lot of crazy shit. For me, Heath Ledger got that like, absolutely perfect. He's like a, a complete agent of chaos. That's what I want from my Joker. Turn up. Does a lot of shit, kills a lot of people, gets his ass kicked by Batman, and then gets sent to prison at the end, or something along those lines. Don't want an explanation for why he's a bad guy. There are certain villains that should stay like that. Cruella de Vil, uh, for me, is like... Why can't they just accept that some people are just assholes? you know? Then some people just enjoy being bad. There's no reason for it. They are just complete dickheads. Like, can't we leave a few bad guys that are just like that? It doesn't like need explaining. From the advert for this Cruella movie, Emma Stone's amazing. She looks really, really good in it as uh, Cruella. It looks like she works for someone who's like a mega bitch, so it kind of ends up like being a bitch off, shall we say. Um, but like I say, hopefully they just keep her as bad as we all know that she is in the uh, 101 Dalmatian movies and don't be like, oh, you should feel sorry for her. Look how bad her life's been. And no, she's just a bad guy. <laughs> Please just keep her as a bad guy. We'll see. More on that later on again. Loki. Loki has had a new trailer. So this is a TV series from um, spinning off from the MCU, Thor's brother Loki, obviously. So spoilers if you haven't seen it. When they go back in Avengers Endgame, he steals the Tesseract at one point and disappears into a porthole. And we haven't seen anything from him since. This TV series spins off from that. So that version of Loki. It looks like he's being blamed for everything that the Avengers fucked up, which I kind of really, really love. So apparently, there has been a new advert for it this week. And it goes a bit deeper into the plot of the TV series and what they're doing and what they're making him do. And it's like a secret organisation of timekeepers who kidnap Loki and are forcing him to right all the wrongs 
that are going on in the timeline. So it turns out that because Loki stole the Tesseract at a certain point, then different timelines have branched off in different directions and everything's going wrong. So they are now forcing Loki to sort out all these timelines. So it's, I love that. Sign me up all day. Um, I just hope there's like 20 episodes of it. I doubt it though, because what? So with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, we're getting six episodes. We're three into that now, and it's amazing. What was WandaVision? WandaVision was ten episodes, wasn't it? So it's probably going to be like just eight or something like that, just to be in the middle. It looks massively big budget, though. It looks like they've gone all out. Um, and it looks like to uh, Loki is going to be towing that line, good guy, bad guy again. But, um, yeah, it looks mint. From that new... Uh, from the new... <laughs> Uh, yeah, from the new advert that we've seen, it looks really, really good. I can't wait for this. It's out later in the year. There's a bunch of other stuff as well that uh, I'm looking forward to coming from Marvel and Disney Plus. Putting everything on there and like taking everything to the series format is um, really such a good idea. I think we should do like I think they should do more from. I know we got a Hawkeye series coming up, but wouldn't it be great to see some more Hawkeye and Black Widow? Maybe like show why they're so close. Do like a bit of a prequel thing, because we know we can't really do much of the story afterwards. But as far as Black Widow is concerned, you've all seen Endgame now. I'm not spoiling nothing for you there, um, because this movie that's coming out with Black Widow is going to be a prequel, and it's very much revolves around her family and how she became the Black Widow. But it'd be really, really nice to see her and um, Jeremy Renner's character, Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye, like. See how they got together and uh, stuff like that. It's really, really good. They've always just been best friends, which is lovely, rather than there being a will they, won't they, all that love interest kind of thing. I think that could have been uh, a bit much. She, she, Her and the Hulk were always uh, like hinted at, weren't they? But nothing ever really happened there because the Hulk was a big nerdy wimp. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see more of it. really love the character. That said, though, it looks like... Um, Black Widow's sister that we have seen in the adverts for the Widow movie, it looks like her character's going to come in it a lot more. Maybe like a Young Avengers type thing, so you've got the two kids from what, what, what are they called? Um, I think it's Warlock and Speed who are Scarlet Witch's two kids. Um, we're getting a uh, a new Hawkeye. Hayley Steinfeld's character in Hawkeye. Oh my god, her name's totally fallen out of my head, the character that she's playing. Bishop. Something Bishop. Oh, that's going to do my head in. Um, and then, obviously, this new younger version of... Um, this new younger version of Black Widow, her younger sister. So it looks like they might be teeing up a Young Avengers. Maybe as a series, maybe as... I don't know, maybe to take over the mantle now all the older Avengers are dying off or getting too old to run about like idiots in Superman suits. But we shall see where that goes. Uh, very interested. Really, really like it. Um, so, finally, there's a foreign film that I caught an advert for that I wanted to give a quick mention to because it's another one along the same kind of ilk as something I watched on Netflix the other week. So the one that I saw an advert for the other day was something called Cosmoball. It was dubbed, dubbed quite badly, so I'm not sure. I'm not too sure of the country of our origin, but it looks massive. Like the special effects in it are crazy. Um, it looks insane. The plot sounds absolutely mental. It turns out that it's like a zero G football game. Everybody watching at home thinks it's just a game. Everybody playing knows it's kind of basically a war, and they are fighting with like the equivalent. They are playing football with the equivalent of like a nuclear warhead or something along those lines, and like the winner saves the universe or ruins it. It looks like it looks great, and um, the the effects look quality. the The action looks absolutely amazing, and it really really reminded me of a film that I watched on Netflix the other way the other week called Space Sweepers. Now it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but what a great film! And um, again, it's um. I think it's an Asian movie. I couldn't tell you where it was from, but uh, it's half dubbed. But it's set in the future, and it's really, really clever the way it's done. So you can either watch it as subtitles or dubbing. Either way, it still has some subtitles in, because I think there's about eight different languages that are spoken in this film at one point. So it's set in space, obviously. The name kind of gives that away. 
but it's like a multinational, uh, multi-ethnicity community that all works in space. So some of them um, are like speaking Mandarin, there's German, there's French, there's English, and all these different uh, languages all together. They've obviously, they've got universal translators, but in the movie, they have them speaking their own language and they either subtitle it or dub it over. Um, the main characters aren't English, so if you choose the dubbing option on Netflix, it dubs them. And But then obviously there are English characters as well that come into it. It's about a group of um, space sweepers, basically. So debris from all like old age satellites that have been pumped into space for years and years and years come falling to Earth or crash into the newer satellites and the newer space stations and all that, causing loads of damage. So these space sweepers have to go and clean up as much of this debris as possible and they get paid money for it. Um, and then they find out about this weapon that's about to destroy the Earth and they have to decide whether they're going to sell out to make some money or um, they're actually going to do what's right and try and save the Earth. And then the plot unravels and gets deeper and deeper and deeper and is very more, much more complicated than anybody expected. It's brilliant. What a great film. I definitely recommend you watch it. Go away and have a look at it. Space Sweepers on Netflix. It was so good. One of the best films that I've seen in quite a while. Um, hopefully this Cosmo Ball is going to be around the same kind of thing. It looks just as it looks even more mental, but I'm definitely into it. So I'm definitely going to be getting involved in that when it comes out. I'll try and get some more details on it. I know there's an advert floating about on the internet, so I'll set, share that on our, over on our Facebook page so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but besides that, yeah, more details uh, once I've hopefully watched it, once it comes out soon. I imagine that'll be streaming like everything else, but we shall see. Um, yeah, so I think that is just about us for this week. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Subscribe to us on youtube or on itunes and soundcloud if you just want to listen to the podcast we also have a facebook page a twitter and an instagram uh, that we're quite active on most of the stuff takes place on the facebook page as you'd expect so give us a follow on facebook to see what's going on and where we are with that but until next time thank you very much and i'll see you soon <laughs>